Hey, this is Pastor Rick. The question today, again, is what have you accepted? You know, there are things we accept in life, right? There are things we just go along with, and debt is one of them. Last time I talked about our money, right? This time I'm talking about debt. And last time I asked you about saving, did you save any money? Do you have a percentage you save? What's your goal? And how God really wants you to be blessed. I talked about churches last time, but this time, this time I'm talking about debt and you and a plan and warning signs that you be in trouble. Excuse my grandma. There are things that can let people know, man, you are headed down the wrong road. This is going to be a fun teaching. Stay there with me. I promise it'll help you in your life. Stay right there. It starts in just a minute. Me and you are going to go on demand and get in the Word. Stay right there. Well, I'm glad you're back today. I like this series because this is a series about acceptance. And I believe that there are things that people accept. I have accepted things in my life, things that I shouldn't have accepted. I accepted a certain level of um, physical challenge that could be resolved with more exercise. I accepted uh, certain things in my finances that I didn't have to accept. I accepted certain levels of debt that I didn't have to accept. I mean, I really didn't have to, but I chose to, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But let me say this to you. I, this teaching we're going to do today is designed to help you rethink your life. I, I challenge you the last time we were together to look around your house, Look around the condition and say, okay, I accepted this. I accepted the clothes on the floor. I accepted, I accepted. And I'm not putting you down. I'm just simply saying we all have done that. Look at your level of income. Some of you could have done something about that, but you've accepted where you are. You'd be surprised how much you can turn your entire life around. Stand in the mirror. This is so hard to do. Stand in the mirror and say, this is what I accepted. Now, I'm telling you, I'm like you. I'm working on stuff too. I'm still trying to, hey, man, I'm trying. I'm telling you what. But, but I will never do better if I don't challenge myself to say, I will not accept this. I will not accept these grades. I'm not going to accept these grades. It's so funny when I got to, and my under, <laughs> if I were academically honest here, I never was a person who strove, uh, who strived rather, to have all A's. I was just supposed to pass. I, I, I just, it wasn't part of our family culture. You know, my mother didn't, she wanted me to pass and, you know, and do well, but I didn't have to be on, a, on the dean's list. As a matter of fact, I didn't really fully understand what that meant. One of my members asked me, she says, Pastor Ricky, uh, were you ever on the dean's list? And I just looked at her like, I dare you, child, ask me such a question. Of course not. I was not. <laughs> because I don't understand it. I mean, and I think now I do. Uh, it wasn't until I got to, in my upper college life, Years beyond four years, probably more in my master's program, when I really, really changed. Ah, but before then, I, I, I started taking some classes and some other things. After I graduated from college at about 23, it took me to about 24 ish, 24 ish, there about, before I really caught a hold to the vision. It was, it was a long, 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 long time. It was a long time. It was a long time. You heard me, I did that a long time, right? <laughs> it takes a long time. It was, it was amazing how long it took for me to see. I, 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 I love reading, but I didn't love reading in high school. I, I did, kind of, sort of, reading the Bible. I, had, I was a real spiritual person. But I, I didn't love learning like I learn now to learn. But it took me a while. So sometimes you blossom when you blossom. Everything past 24 I was committed to not accepting anything but an A. So when I took a class here, I took some Greek, I took some of this, that, and the other. And I, I mean, I, I aced all the classes I took after, after I graduated from my first, first, first degree. I, I felt like something in me. By the time I got to a master's degree, I was like, absolutely, doctoral, doctoral level degree. I was completely committed to only A's all the time. I wouldn't accept it, and I worked like it. My devotion and commitment, I'm not saying that to brag, I'm saying I changed. Something in me changed, a desire. And that's what's got to happen to you. You've got to look at your life, look at your finances, look at the way you live and say, I, I don't accept this. Now, if I do my best and don't get there, eh, I don't kind of accept that either. I believe I can get there. This is me. That's how I think. I think I can get there. <laughs> this is how I think. I am determined. I will do whatever it takes, hours. If it takes hours, if it takes hours and hours, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to get there. And there's something about that attitude that no one can put into me. I have to desire it. So a lot of times if you look around you, you've accepted things 
you've, you've tolerated things that you didn't have to tolerate. And so there comes a moment when you say, you know what, I'm going to rethink this. I want to rethink the facts. Here are the facts I told you last time. Proverbs 22 and 7. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. That's just the truth. But if you accept being a slave, if you accept being underneath the load of someone else's foot, then, then there's nothing that anyone can do to free you. Parents learn this from their kids until the kids say, I don't want this in my life anymore. You can't be free. Then, you know, I, I believe that there's a the point where you say, I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be dishonest. I've been dishonest. I've accepted deceit in my life. There's a guy I just love, Patrick Henry. Yeah, I, 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 I love him. I love the statement he made. You know, give me liberty or give me death. Right? Remember that? And uh, this guy in the 1700s, and he was really impressive. I mean, and I read that, and I thought, when I first heard it, I thought, what a statement. But to be truthful, <laughs> this guy... Uh, wasn't honest with himself. He didn't accept um, the truth. He kind of does. Well, let me read what he said. You'll, you'll see what I mean. This is a guy who said, give me liberty, give me death, yeah, but he owns 67 slaves. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was phenomenal. And here's what he said about it. This is what he said. He opposed slavery, which he considered a l lamentable, lamentable, you know, to lament, lament, lamentable, I can get it on any good day, lamentable evil, but was himself a slave owner. He was conflicted enough to write, I will not, I cannot justify owning slaves, but not conflicted enough to actually set anyone free. Let's pause on that one. Notice this guy who's accepted something because he felt he couldn't ignore it. He just couldn't you know, not have a slave, because if he didn't have a slave, he wouldn't have had the $2.5 million that they were worth. Slaves were worth about $500 a piece back then, so that would come out to be about, you know, $2.5 million, and that's a lot of money. It made him a millionaire, so I can't let the slaves go, because, you know, even though I'm conflicted, that's like not, I can't do that. Here's the point. He accepted it. It's amazing for greed for selfish reasons, we accept things. Even if it means being abused. And I shouldn't treat my wife this way, but I, I you know, uh, what can I do? I am really interested in that fact. What we accept. Even when we know this is wrong. Even when I, I'm clear. And when it comes to debt and wealth, when it comes to this whole issue of money, there are things we just accept. So what I thought was I, I list for you what I call the warning signs. These are things that kind of let you know you are not true. So this guy we just looked at, right, uh, Pat, Patrick Henry, you can say, okay, Patrick, uh, what do you think about liberty? People need to be free. You know, I, yes, yes, people need to be free. And then they said, what about the slaves you own? Well, we, well, no, we can't free them, you know. So that, that, knowing how he's accepted that conflict, I see it all the time. I see people who name the name of Christ who live contrary to what Christ says, and they just accept it. They say, well, you know, hey, everybody's got to have a problem. It's going to be my problem, sleeping around. That's going to be my problem. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I mean I've said people that I love tell me that, and I'm thinking, come on, give me a break. But there, there are things we accept. So what I want to do is I want to just, in regards to money specifically, since that's what, kind of what the topic is in the series, I want to talk about what you've accepted regarding money. And this is what I call danger signs. So I want to give you a list, okay, of things that you need to look out for. And, and I want you to look at yourself and say, am I like this guy, this Henry guy? Am I like this Patrick Henry guy? I'm saying one thing, but in reality, I'm kind of not doing what I say. Here we go. Here's the list. Okay, we're in danger. These are warning signs. These are things that make you go, oh boy. Okay, these are warning signs. We're in danger if we don't have a skill that independently makes money. Hear that carefully. We're in danger if we don't have, number one, a skill that independently makes money. So if you, if you don't have enough resources, a skill that helps you make money, uh, you can pray all day long, but there's nothing for God to work with. You need to, you need to open your heart to developing a skill. Can you sing? Can you plant flowers? What can you do? 
There's something that you need to be able to do in order to do that, and it needs to be independent. In other words, outside of me. You know, I always, <laughs> I always find it fascinating when people, they have money as long as you're present. But no, 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 no. Your kids need to have money outside of you. It's fine that they have money with you. I think families should work together. That's another conversation. I really believe they should. I think, I think matter of fact, I think they should work together longer than we often admit. 18 is not long enough. We need, you know, if you study the Bible, I love the story of Joseph and his brothers. His brothers were in their 40s, and they were still working with Jacob, their dad, to build wealth. They, there's something about family wealth that can be amazing, but that's another conversation. But, but I want you to see, though, the importance of having skill, though. You need to have skill and independent passion to, to build and grow so that you can have money on your own. There's something about independent wealth. So you're in danger if you don't have a skill, and, and it's not independent. So that in case they die, you can still live. Okay, that's important. Number two. Okay, we're in danger if you're not saving routinely. If you're not putting money aside routinely, you are in trouble. You're in danger. Because that means you're not building up enough reserves. So if something happens, you don't, you don't have any place to go. You know, being, being raised as an only child is a fascinating experience. My mother used to always say, nobody is going to help you. She used to get down, like, you know, in my face and says, let me tell you now, Ricky, are you clear? Nobody is going to help you. That thing was powerful. And that thing, I said, yes, ma'am. My eyes would be all big. Yes, ma'am. She said, no, no, nobody. Pick up, this, pick up behind yourself, son. Nobody is going to be picking up behind you. Nobody. She, she would say things repeatedly to me to make sure I understood nobody. Nobody. You need to save for yourself on a routine basis because you need to be able to save you. You know, always need a miracle and a friend and somebody to help you and calling people every month and on the 15th and the 30th. And you don't need to do that. It's fine. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. There are seasons when families band together. There are seasons when friends band together. I get that. But your goal should be to be independent. Your goal should be to save when you do get it. When you do get it, you need to not just spend it and go do stuff. You need to learn when you get some cash in your hand, when you get some resources, you want to make sure you don't, you don't ignore saving, routinely save. All right, number three. We're in danger if we're not saving routinely, okay? We're in, we're in trouble if we use credit cards without paying them out weekly. And I want to pause right there. Now, I, I, credit cards are a new phenomenon. Really, in the 70s is when you really started seeing them in the 80s is when they really started, you know, being used like they are now. There was a time you couldn't use a credit, there was no credit card. You can go down to Sears or someplace, you know, and back in those days, and you could get some, get you a washer and dry on credit, you know, and you can make payments and you can get you, you know, maybe a lawnmower or something on credit and pay it off over time. See, but as a, as a rule, you didn't have a little card in your purse or in your pocket that you can just go swipe and use and had all these high credit limits. And what high credit limits do, and I understand because they give me high credit limits. I know, I know they get enough credit to put you, in, put you in bondage forever. And what they do is they lie to you and say, you, you rich. You're not rich. That's a lie. You're not rich. You got a high credit. Yes, you got a high, yes, you have a credit. I used to like that, you know, especially, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't name the cards, but there's some cards that are, membership has its privileges, you know what I'm saying? And you just, just flash it, bam, and people go, ooh. Boy, he got some money. Look at that money. It's credit. It's not cash. I have to pay that back. And if I don't pay it back, I got to pay interest. And I got to pay a lot of interest. And if I, if I don't pay them, they call you and they talk to you in a mean voice and tell you, you didn't pay us. And you, we're going to up your credit. You know, we're going to up your, your interest rate. And we're going to turn you in to the FICO people. And they're going to lower your score. It's already 600. <clears throat> You're going down to three. If you don't pay us, <laughs> you, you don't want to do that. You want to understand what this is not. So, so be clear. If you can't pay those people, when you charge something, right? You go down and you charge something, and you, you know you don't have $5,000. You know you, don't, you ain't never had $5,000. Why are you going on a $5,000 vacation? Because I need to get away. Because I'm in bondage, and I need to. I need to rest. I'm losing my mind. When you get back and can't pay that $5,000, you're going to lose your mind too. You need to pause for a second, save your money, 
Go on a $2,000 vacation if you have to. And, and let everybody know, listen, we're not going to the Ritz Carlton this, this time. We're going down to La Quinta. We're going to the Holiday Inn. We're going to go. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to change this. Now, I want to say this to you because I've, I've done well in life. God's blessed me. But I'm telling you, when you make money, you get crazy. You start doing stuff. You start charging stuff. And you don't pay it off right away. That's the trap. You don't pay it off right away. And you combine all these pieces and you end up with a whole lot of issues. And some of you business people, you're doing it. You got this line of credits and you just, the line of credit was for this purpose. And now you're using it for this and for that and this and that and paying yourself extra and doing this. And now you are, and then you're not paying your taxes on time. You, so your taxes are behind. You, you got all, and now, you, and now you're praying for another client. You know, you, you're, trying, you're trying to get another client to cover your, 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 your losses. Listen, that's a mess. And that's something you've accepted. That's why I say pay them off every week. Pastor Rick, if you pay them off every 30 days, you have no interest charges. So what's the problem? I agree. I agree. See, but here's what I believe. They're smarter than us. I believe all credit card people, bankers, if you're watching me, you know I'm telling the truth. Y'all smart now. you put these plans together, these financial tools and uh, opportunities, and the, the, they're based on scientific studies. For example, did you know that most people who sign up for 90 days same as cash, I think one study I looked at the other day was like 80%, 85%, don't pay it off in 90 days. You can give them 90 days, 100 days, you can say two years, it doesn't matter. Haven't you wondered why they do that? Why they'll give you a cash, you can, you can do a cash transfer, and, 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 and then they'll say you have a whole year to pay it back. Because they know 80% of them won't, won't do that. They know, <laughs> they know it. They've studied you. they studied me. They know our habits. We like getting stuff, but we don't want to pay for it. So what you have to do is have that moment where you look at yourself and say, okay, let me accept the truth. Let me look at my life. Let me admit. That's why I need to develop a habit that says, if I'm going to do this, I need to have the money. Well, what about those of us who aren't rich, Rick and Tim? And we have to use credit cards. Because that is what we have to do to survive. I understand that. But, you know, you're going to be on the chain gang. You remember that song? That song, <laughs> you hit to the chain gang. I'm telling you now, it, I say this in love. I got all the cards myself. But it is the devil in your pocket. Listen to me. It is the devil in your pocket. It's talking to you and lying to you. You're going down there to Target. You're going down to Walmart. You're going to the store. You're shopping at the mall. Christmas gifts for everybody. You're doing all this stuff. You need to tell everybody, listen, you get gift cards this year, $25. Everybody getting the gift card. It's like an open because everybody getting the car. You tell everybody, everybody getting the gift card. You don't have that kind of money, Grandma. Mama, that you don't have it. You, you've got, until you, listen, until you accept this truth, you're not going to be prepared for the next seasons in your life. And they're coming. Retirement, physical challenges, changes. It just gets coming. It doesn't matter whether you want it to or not. And, and one of the saddest moments is when it comes and you're unprepared because you would not face the truth. So you're in danger. You're in trouble if you're not preparing for the future. You're in danger if you're using credit cards without paying them off quickly. And I say within a week, right away, time, you know, not, not a month, because 30 days for some of us is too long. So we, once we do 30, we'll do 60. That's just a thought. This is Ricky Temple talking to you, okay? We're in trouble if we think giving our money can solve all people's problems. Uh, I heard this said by Oprah one time. She said, my money won't solve your problems. You think it will. Giving people money, long, I've, I've never made friends with money. I've learned a long time ago, they're in that place for a reason. And it's, it's not until they decide that they want to be different. And, and I can't be responsible for the decisions they make because I need to learn how to accept what they have decided for themselves, and I need to learn how to accept what I have built for myself. So I need to learn how to what I call, have what, uh, what I call personal wealth and advantage without guilt. Personal wealth. One of the hardest things about success is watching people fail and not feeling obligated to bail everybody you know out of their troubles. 
And for some of you who've prospered, that's exactly what's happened. You've become the, the community bank feeding trough. You are the person who feels obligated to pay for every dinner when you go out. You feel obligated to do everything because they can't, you can. So you don't hold people to accountability. You, matter of fact, you, you enslave them by making them believe they have what they don't have. You have accepted this burden and you shouldn't. They should care. The Bible says, don't, listen to what the Bible says, let every man bear his own burden. I know it's hard, but they need to bear that burden. And that doesn't mean that I don't help you. That doesn't mean that we don't partner together. But that, does, that means that we don't ever separate the reality that this is something you need to be trying to work on. We need to do it together. Like, you know, the Greeks are the comforter, the parakletos, the one who comes along, the paraclete, and he comes along and he helps you. I should help you because I can't stay. I have to leave. I can't stay. I'm not, I'm not eternal. And my greatest gift to you is to teach you how to do this on your own. And then when I have something, I don't need to be guilty about it. Here's what 1 Timothy 6, 17 says. I love this verse. Here's what it says. Command those who are rich in, in this present world not to be arrogant. That's important, right? Not to put them their hope in wealth. That's important, which is so uncertain. Don't put your, your faith and all that in wealth because it's so uncertain. The Bible calls it the deceitfulness of riches. It'll fool you. Get you some money, get you a few stocks, get you a few nice house and look a little nice ride, and you start thinking that you're more than you are. Watch this now. He said, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God. I love that. Who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. God doesn't care that you drive a nice car. God's happy for you. Hey, yay for you. That's okay. That's okay. The problem, the problem is. When you refuse to accept the fact, you are part of this problem. You've accepted debt, levels you don't have to accept. But Pastor Rick, what if I'm drowning in it already? Okay, stop. It's kind of like this. You're in the rain, right? And you're wet. And you're out there in the rain saying, I am so wet. I am just dripping with water. Here's the first thing. Let's get out of the rain. Let's not go jump in the lake or the pool because we're already wet. So let's back up the train get out of the rain, change clothes. There you go. Change our way of thinking. Stop accepting being wet. Dry off and let's start working on a new way to deal with rain. Life's going to always have rainy moments. That's part of it. There's a lot I can say today. There's a lot more I'm going to say in the coming time with you. But I want to give you a little sample of where we're going to go next time. These are what I call questions people ask me about money. And and uh, one question that somebody asked that was really amazing, I thought it was fascinating. It said, who were the broke people in the Bible, Pastor? Where are the people that were in real financial bondage and where are they? Believe it or not, you have to really look to find a person in Scripture who was broke. I'm going to give you a list more next time we gather, but just as a sample, the Abraham, for example, the Bible says, was rich. Chapter 13, verse 2 of Genesis. Uh, Abraham had a big staff. He had 318 trained servants in Genesis 14 and 14. And if you go all the way through, you just see these, this list of people that in regards to their finances, in regards to their assets, they were, they were prosperous. Noah built the ark out of his own money. Think about that. He built that out of his own money. And, and you think about the, you think about, go, let's keep going. You know, Jacob, Joseph, and I'm talking about these all next week. All these people had resources. Moses, these are not people that were struggling. Jesus had 12 guys who worked with him, some say full time. They had families, most of them. Um, for three and a half years, you can't not feed your family, right? These, these are guys, this idea that, Everybody that God used was struggling. No, that's not true. As a matter of fact, I think one of the tragedies is these are guys that we, we, we have not seen the world the way they do. They, they didn't accept certain things. They knew they had to plant crops. They knew they had to grow, deal with herds. Jacob did for sure. They knew they had to do the business. 
Some of us are so spiritual that we have sidestepped the business. Well, Pastor Rick, here's what I think. I don't think we need to talk about money that much. We need to talk about Jesus. Talk about salvation. Talk about reaching the, reaching the people with the gospel. Okay, that's great. Uh, how are you going to do that? You're going to drive to them? You need gas, right? You're going to do this? You're going to use television? You need TV cameras and lights? You need those, you know, you need the, this is expensive. The board here, no. This, this, didn't, this didn't come free, right? I'm just trying to understand, how are you going to do it if you don't have any resources? This idea that you somehow have to, have to somehow make God talk somehow exclusive to life talk. You need both. God is the one who created all this, and he wanted us to be good stewards of it. He told Adam and Eve that. I want you to till the ground. I want you to name the animals. I want you involved in the natural world around you. Understand the natural principles and do not accept things that are not healthy for you, like eating that tree. The things I don't want you to do because they hurt you. And there are habits you can develop, dead habits you can develop, attitude habits you can develop, relationship habits you can develop, moral habits you can develop that don't help you. Everything that God says don't do is designed to stop you from being hurt. He knew what would happen to you if you slept around with everybody. He knew he said your heart going to be broken. You're going to be all messed up in your head. He knew that you, you wouldn't be physically healthy. He knew if you didn't save any money. He knew. He's like that parent saying, come on, talk to me. Now listen to me. But you've accepted disobedience as a lifestyle. You've accepted certain habits as a lifestyle. And it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Even if you have a yacht and you're sitting out on the Mediterranean looking at me right now and you got beautiful women or handsome men and you got money in the bank and you don't have God in your life, it doesn't work. I'm not saying stuff is, 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 makes it everything work. Because that's why a lot of people who got a lot of stuff on drugs because they found out it doesn't work. Set your affection on things above not just on the earth, but while you're on the earth, be a good steward. They both go together. What have you accepted? What have you accepted? Let me pray for you. Father, I pray this would be a time of spiritual reflection where we understand the balance between how to manage our wealth, how to manage our debt, how to live our lives. Help us to see the power of balance. I pray that we take this truth today apply to our lives. I pray for churches, for businesses. I pray for families. I pray for those, oh God, who lost their way. I pray for that person who's struggling to pay their taxes, struggling to get themselves right, get themselves in a healthier place. I pray for that person who's struggling to meet the next week's bills or this week's bills. I pray for them that this would be a sermon where they say, I'm not going to accept this. I'm going to begin to get out of the rain, put on some dry clothes, listen to good counsel, and build a better life. There is, the Bible says, a rest for the people of God. Help them find it, I pray, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I also would pray for them if they don't know you as Savior, if they've never committed their lives to you, that this would be a moment where they would say, Jesus, I need, I need, I need help. God, I need you in my life. I need a transforming moment. Let this be that moment for them, I pray because it really is all about knowing you at the end of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, it's always a joy to be with you today. Got more to talk about. Next week will be questions people ask me. More things they're going to ask me and talk about. I'm going to, I'm going to take you on a journey that's different, that's going to take us down a path, that's going to lift you to a new place. You're going to love our questions and conversations next week. So you join me one more time on this topic. I promise it's going to help you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, now we've talked about it, gone through the Word, looked at the Bible, asked you a few questions. My favorite question of all is, do you see the warning signs? The warning signs that say, I am in trouble. Can't pay off this credit card right away. You remember that one, right? I am holding it for a month, two months, three months, 90 days, same as cash, two years, same as cash. Bondage, bondage, bondage. Listen, my friend, this could be the birthplace of a new beginning for you. 
You may not can get it all paid off now, but you can over time. So let me pray for you. Father, let them take this message and let, it, let them apply it to their lives. I speak freedom, blessing, and grace in their life. Help them get to a place of deliverance and move from a place of bondage to a place of freedom. I speak that over their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a lot more to talk about down the road, people. The Word of God is full of all kind of good stuff. I'll see you next time with more things to talk about on demand with me, Pastor Rick. See you then. Bye-bye.